Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. We are so excited to be together again and for a very distinguished guest, David McGilvery, who is the race director of the Boston Marathon and many other things. <laughs> I will say before we get started, because we are so excited to talk to you, we're, we're pleased that we just came from the Metro West Y Community Breakfast, the kickoff seemingly for the season, for their annual appeal, but the kickoff for the marathon, and Dave was the keynote speaker, so inspiring, and was kind enough to come over to sit with us right after. So thank you so much for being here. He actually got the Inspiration yeah. Award. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, congratulations. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, well, thank you. Cheers and to um, you. the Hoyts. Rick and Dick Hoyt, who yeah. the world knows, yeah. uh, received it last year. Right. And to follow yes. in their footsteps is quite an honor. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. we, we are pleased to have you here. And I really didn't know your full story. Mm -hmm. So we'll be having a clip that will air with this program as well. But um, tell us a little bit about, uh, about you. you. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I don't know much about me. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was born. No. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> this is thing. You're local. Yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah, um, I grew up in Medford, Mass. Okay. Med and uh, Mepha. Mepha. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, you know, I, and then I moved to North Andover. That's where I live now. Okay. So um, my whole life, I, I always wanted to be involved in athletics and challenging myself. And um, when I was a young kid, you know, going out for basketball and baseball and all the different team sports, but unfortunately for me, given my short stature, it was difficult to make the cut, if you will. Okay. And so that's why I started running. And um, since then, I've run about 150,000 miles, and uh, I've run 155 marathons. I've run Boston 45 times, done the Ironman wow. Triathlon in Hawaii nine times. I run my age on my birthday every year, so that's getting really <laughs> difficult because oh I'm getting really goodness. old. Wow. And um, It's relative. Yeah. <laughs> But and that, you started yeah. running Boston before you were the race director, right? Yeah. Th um, on my first attempt, um, I, I didn't say, make it. Tell, tell us that story. Tell us the story. That yeah, we well, um, yeah. you know, I had heard about the marathon on the radio and living in Medford. And um, so a, a dream of mine, if you will, um, and we can talk about a recent released book of mine called uh, Dream Big for, for Children, was um, to, to run in the marathon. So I decided... Uh, one day th of the marathon that I was going to give it a go. So um, my grandfather happened to be a, a supporter of my athleticism. So I knew he lived near the course. So I called him up that morning and I said, hey, I'm going to go run the marathon. He said he would meet me at the 24 mile point. So I said, great. My brother drove me out here to Hopkinton and dropped me off and off I went. And I didn't know what I was doing. I hadn't um, you know, I hadn't trained for it. Because back then, you could just run. Behind yeah, basically, you, you, there you were no qualifying standards back then and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. So How old were you? I was 17. Wow. Okay. So I was a senior in high school. And um, I ended up dropping out in the hills in Newton and um, <laughs> got taken to the Newton Wellesley Hospital. Oh, no. And, <laughs> and driven home. My parents came and picked me up and I eventually called my grandfather to apologize that I didn't make it. And he said, well, you train next time, and I'll be there waiting for you. And I said, deal. And a couple of months later, he passed away of a heart attack. And I said, I dedicated that whole year to training and, and um, to get, you know, I, I needed to get this one done. And mm -hmm. I got a little ill the day before, and I wasn't sure I was going to be able to make it. And my parents eventually supported me. And so off I went, and I got to where I dropped out the year before, and I was hurting. And I was doing the survivor shuffle over the hills. And finally, I got to 21.5 right by Boston College, and I dropped out again. Mm -hmm. So that's the second time in a row. And I'm just thinking, you know, this wasn't meant to be. And I always feel in life there are defining moments where things happen, maybe for a reason. Maybe it's fate. I'm not sure. But you have to sort of grab a hold of it and take advantage of it and turn negatives into a positive. And, and the defining moment at at that point was that I looked around and behind me was the Evergreen Cemetery and I had recalled that's where they buried my grandfather and he mm -hmm. said he'd be there waiting for me the next year and that maybe he wasn't the there details. yeah he oh wasn't there goodness. physically but he was, he was there, there was his tombstone oh right, right there, there. and um, wow. I said grandpa you, you kept your end of the deal I, I gotta keep going so I picked up picked myself up and off I went and I finished in four and a half hours so wow. you 
dropped out, but you didn't drop out. You went I, back on. I kept going, mm -hmm. and oh I finished goodness. only because I was inspired by the yes. fact that he kept his end of the deal, you know, his commitment in a different way. Yeah. Yes. And I said, I, I need to. So I, I gained an inner strength. Yes, you know, indeed. sometimes it's not just physical. And a lot of times people say, well, that's more mental than it is physical. Well, I think in many instances it's more emotional wow. than it spiritual. is even mental right. and yeah. spiritual. Yes. I mean, there's a lot of things that wow. play into mm -hmm. all of this. So when I crossed the finish line that year in 1973, I said, I'm going to run this race every year for the rest of my life in honor and tribute to that lesson he taught me about earning the right to do things. Mm -hmm. And I've run it every year since. And when I got off at the job to help manage it, direct it, uh, back in 1988, I had a difficult decision to make. Do I run in it or run it? What mm -hmm. do I do? And I, I just decided to take the job and let the cards fall where, where they may. Well, and, you have five kids. So and I have five kids. Well. I need a job. Yeah, I, <laughs> so the long story short is, you know, I, I directed the race that day and then went back out, came back out here to Hopkinton at 8 o'clock at night and ran the whole thing and finished in, in the dark by myself, last finisher. And I've, I've done, done it that way ever since for the last 30 years and I have a motto and my He's motto the is clean up guy. <laughs> I'm the clean up guy. Well, I'm, I'm even more excited to meet you because I've always heard about the guy who runs at night after it's all over yeah. and it's you. It's me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I know my family's gone out at like six or so at yeah. night and a few others, Tim's usually there yeah. and a few others and we're like literally he gets dropped off in a car, yeah. waves at everybody and just and goes. goes. He doesn't talk, he doesn't take time to stop and he just goes. No. But we're like, we're like this like group of like a dozen of us will stand there, clap, like go this on. Is it. <laughs> well, it used to be yeah. old Johnny Kelly, yes. and Johnny had run the marathon 61 times, and and Johnny was a dear friend of mine. In fact, I was a pallbearer at his at his oh. funeral. Mm -hmm. and that's how close we were, and uh, he's run it 61 times. I've run it now 45. Not that I'm going after his right. record. <laughs> I wouldn't no. I wouldn't insult him to think that I could ever get to that point, but. But, you know, the whole idea is, is making commitments. Um, yes. You know, the toughest part about running a marathon is, is signing the application. Mm. You know, it's, it's sort of just looking at it and say, I want to make this commitment. And so you have to first want to do it. And then you have to have the courage and the guts to sort of commit to it. Mm -hmm. You commit to yourself. And then when you really seal the deal is when you commit to loved ones. And, yeah. and now philanthropy has entered the space. And now you're committing to you know, a greater purpose right. than just yourself. And that's why the, and the, the that, folks were at the, at the Y and they were running, raising money for the YMCA, you know, and we're raising $30, $35 million wow. a it's year from the Boston I Marathon. Speaking mm -hmm. about what you just yeah. did, though, and you've been running for the MR8 Foundation. Yeah. I wanted you to talk about, because I know the clip is going to show what you just did this past winter. Mm -hmm over seven days. Yeah. Oh, tell us. Well, I've always felt that uh, it was funny because back in 1978, I had a, another dream of running across the United States. So I was working in the John Hancock Tower at the time, and I looked out, and I saw Fenway Park, and I saw a sign in right field, and the sign said, help make a dream come true, support the Jimmy Fund. I wasn't even sure what the Jimmy Fund did or was. So I picked up the phone, I called the Jimmy Fund, and a guy by the name of Ken Coleman answered the phone, and Ken was the voice of the Boston Red Sox, and oh, he was the wow. executive director of the Jimmy Fund. Yeah. And I said, Mr. Coleman, my name is Dave, and I want to run across the country for the Jimmy Fund. And after he picked himself <laughs> up off the floor, he said, come on in, let's talk about it. We, I went in, talked about it, and we sealed the deal, and I decided I was going to run across America for the Jimmy Fund. So I went in to the Jimmy Fund clinic, and I saw those kids. And I knew at the time that the battle that I was about to fight by running over five and a half million footsteps across America was in no way as difficult as the battle that they're fighting for their own life. Mm. And I saw a sign in the Jimmy Fund Clinic, and this is what the sign said. The sign said, um, God made only so many perfect heads. Mm -hmm. The rest of them have hair on it. <laughs> and it just made me realize the courage um, of these kids, that the will to, to survive, yes. the trust they have in us to help them survive, and that's what helped me get across America. And so I averaged 40, 50 miles every day for 80 oh days. Finished in Fenway Park in front of 35,000 wow. people. And that was one of the first times anyone had combined running with raising money for cancer research. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it just sort of took off from there. So and that's why my life became giving back. So was yes. that the point wow. that the Jimmy Fund also became an official charity of the Boston Marathon? Yeah, I mean, a, a, a number of years, you know, maybe three or four years later. Okay. You know, and again, no one had... No one had combined running. I mean, it didn't exist right. before right. that. Right. You know, so I was very proud to at least maybe be the spark exactly. to, to get people to think about, well, you know, I can't run a marathon. But 
you know, maybe you change your mind if you're saying, but I want to run one to help my neighbor, to help right. my friend. And all of a sudden, you're getting off the couch. Yeah. The walls of intimidation crumble. Right. Right. And you believe it in yourself. You make the commitment not only to yourself, but to somebody else. Now you're going to get out there, do the work. Mm -hmm. You do the work. You cross the line. You feel good. And you're in it for life. Wow. And that's what happens. And seeing that that's that amazing. was the spark that has now launched all these 5Ks for charities mm -hmm. is huge. It, it is huge. And, I mean, and same thing with the entire... 1978 was 78 the year. Wow. when I did that. Mm -hmm. and, and again, and then since then I've raised myself and, and you know, I started a business, Dave McGilvey Sports Enterprises, so mm -hmm. I put on races all over the country, done, done about 1,100 events all over the country, all over the world actually. Mm -hmm. And 90% of them raise money for those, you know, whoever. Charities. I do the Boston Marathon Jimmy Fun Walk every year. Starts here in Hopkinton, goes all, all the way into Boston. You know, we raise eight, nine million dollars a year. We've raised over 120 million dollars over the last, you know, 30 years. So I feel wow. good about the fact that it isn't just about getting out there and, and running. It's about helping those who are less fortunate. Yeah. So I have to ask, because I'm, I'm always the worky, you know, organizational development person. What, is it, what does it take to be the race director? Let's just say of the Boston yeah. Marathon. What is that job, and what do you do? Well, it's very different today than it was when I started 30 years ago. 30 years ago, there was only a handful of us. So a lot of it was hands on deck where the rubber hits the road, you know, getting out there, moving the road cones, and putting the barricades <laughs> out. Because there wasn't much more to it. Yes. Then. Now uh -huh. the whole thing has changed mm -hmm. so, so much, and especially since the field size went from when I started around 7,000 runners, now we're at 30,000 runners. Yeah. Yes. Is, you know, the level of um, magnitude and prestigiousness, um, mm -hmm. it, it is a business, a lot of sponsorship, a lot of right. media attention, a yes. lot of millions and millions of dollars raised for those yeah. mm -hmm. philanthropy and everything. So there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And I'm just one piece of the overall no, infrastructure. And my job is more just to make sure everyone gets from the start to the finish in a healthy, safe manner. Mm -hmm. But I always say to people now, my job is more of a conductor than mm, it is yes. a director. Because th my skill set is surrounding myself with good people. Right. I, I'm, no, I'm, I'm no one's fool. I, I, can't, <laughs> well, I, I can't play the right guitar, there, right. and I can't <laughs> play the tuba, and I can't play the saxophone, mm -hmm. but I can find people who yeah. yeah. can. Yeah. And so my job is to get those people, line them up, get them to communicate with one another, get them to work harmoniously with one another so that at the end of the day, we have a, a well-managed event. And sort of generally speaking, that's sort of what my, my role is. It's also about balancing personalities and sure. egos and, you know, because everybody has a different take on certain things. So you got to get in a room, you got 100 people, Absolutely. and this one wants to do it this way, that one wants to do it that way. And so it's just a matter of, you know, being able to understand everyone's sort of objectives and, 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 and making it so all work. Yes. Absolutely. So you have kids. Mm -hmm. Do any of them run with you? I have five kids. Um, you Ages. Know, yeah, 27, <laughs> 24. Uh, 13, 11, and 8. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, I can remember all. so two, yeah, <laughs> yes. one no graduated. Birthday, no, no <laughs> and, and, and you know, I don't push running. I, I right. All I push is, like I was saying at the, at the breakfast, is, a, is you know, my whole thing in life is I just want to be an accomplisher. I want to accomplish things, get mm -hmm. things done. Mm -hmm. There are things that are out there. You know, I always say facetiously, sleep is overrated because <laughs> I don't want to sleep because I get things to do. Okay. You know, I want to yeah. check them off the list kind of a thing. And there's so many things that motivate me, inspire me, that I'm passionate about, that I want to be able to do. But So I don't push my kids into doing what I do. I just push them into doing what they want to do. Excellent. And yeah. so one is in sports turf management. He works cool. at Gillette Stadium in Fenway Park, and he does that. Another one is in filmmaking mm. and acting. Excellent. He graduated from Harvard, and now he's at Columbia University making films. Cool. Nice. And then the three younger ones are obviously in school. school. And yeah. so, but. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's fabulous. I don't know if Connie knows, but they, um, we talked. It was talked about a little bit there, and I've been following it, mm. and I'm friends with Tim. Is that you ran seven marathons mm -hmm. in seven days? Yeah, on seven continents. Seven yeah. continents. Okay, Tim, <laughs> how, how was that possible? How, we, well, yeah. um, again, I always say when people ask me what's my best accomplishment, I always say my best accomplishment is my next one. Yes. And I always want to stay relevant. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to just okay. This is my resume from the past. I'm done, and now it's almost like what do you? What have you done for me lately? Mm -hmm. For myself, not yeah. for anyone else, just for myself. I, I need to stay motivated. I, I need a target. Mm -hmm. I need a magnet to draw me, not to get me out of bed every day, right. but just to keep me Inspired, you know, honest. You know, <laughs> okay. I want to right. be honest. Mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, so I heard about the World Marathon Challenge, and a friend had called me up and said, hey, I'm putting a group together. Are you interested in doing it? And I said, well, it's a pretty hefty entry fee to do this. I'm not sure 
uh, you know, I want to do that. And he goes, well, don't worry about that. I'll cover that. We just want you to be part of the group. I said, sign me up. You know, <laughs> it says a free ride all the way around the world, so I'll do it. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a year ago. So then I trained during the course of this past year with everything being focused on the World Marathon Challenge. And so 50, 50 of us did it from around the world. We all met in Cape Town, South Africa. And then um, we flew down to Antarctica and ran a marathon in Antarctica. And basically <laughs> all these marathons were designed just for this event. Uh. Mm -hmm. And they were just loops or out and backs okay. done five times, six times, seven times, whatever it was. So it kept mm -hmm. it tight, contained, yes. you know, safe. So we ran Antarctica, got back on the plane, went to Cape Town. Ran a marathon in Cape Town, get back on a plane, go to Perth, Australia, run one there. And from Perth, we went to Dubai. Dubai, we went to Lisbon, Portugal. Lisbon, Portugal, we went to Cartagena, Colombia. And then from Colombia, we went to Miami for our last race there. Wow. So we ran seven marathons in seven days on seven continents. So Amazing. you had from freezing, freezing, freezing yeah, cold. We, we went to from the freezer to hot. the furnace. Yeah. Mm. So how was that? Well, well it's physically. It, again, you know, what we were doing is, is not, <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, it's, it's not real sane. I, you know, I'll, I'll, <laughs> right, I'll, I'll admit try it. Don't this at home. Right. Don't try this at home. <laughs> right. oh, and we did break all the rules, but that's the challenge of it all, is mm -hmm. to see if you can, you know, withstand, you know, these kinds of, um, you know, these kinds Obstacles, of challenges. And, right. and, you know, what was funny is that, you know, the weather here in Boston over the last, you know, oh three, four God. months, it's been minus this, minus that, and snowing and everything else. I was loving it. I was writing to all my friends saying, this is great. Tomorrow's going to be a storm and <laughs> because I wanted to get out in it yeah. and train in it because that's what I thought I was going to experience in Antarctica. Okay. So I'm wearing the goggles. I'm wearing the face mask. I'm wearing all the 17 layers of clothes and everything else. <laughs> and then we get to Antarctica, and it's 20 degrees. Oh, my God. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> really? So, so I had to stop peeling things off because yeah. it was warmer in Antarctica than it was in Boston. Wow. And I wanted bragging rights to say, hey, I ran in minus 50 <laughs> 40, degrees. And, oh, my God. <laughs> howling winds. And howling winds. <laughs> I like, could still say it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 no, no, they never know. It's a well-kept secret there. amongst 50 people <laughs> and a few penguins. <laughs> right, right, you right. Know, but, uh, but no, I, you know, I, the funny thing about it is the running part was sort of, for me, almost the, the easier of all of it, because that's who I am. That's what I do. That's what I've trained my body for over the years. It was everything in between. It's all the, you know, trying to recover on a plane at 35,000 feet and make sure you don't blood clot, you don't cramp, you don't this, you don't that. You know, nutrition and, you know, getting calories back in and you're only going to eat what they put in front of you. So whether you like it or not, you're stuffing it in your mouth because mm. you just, you got to get something. And, you know, and then just, just getting off the plane, getting on a bus, getting on a, you know, driving to the venue, getting off the bus, not knowing when these things were going to start. Some races started at 11 o'clock at night. Some started at 6 in the morning. Some started at high noon where it's 93 yeah, degrees. Mm. So we just had to be flexible and deal with whatever we were faced with. And that's what I loved about it is just the fear of the unknown, not yeah. knowing what you're going to be up against. And hopefully you did the work in advance to acclimate and prepare yourself for some difficult times. Wow. So many metaphors for life, really. It really is. Mm -hmm. you know, I think that's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you still kept a focus on philanthropy with this one. I did. I did it for MR8 again and raised, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. Um, and th again, I, I've been doing that. I've been running in memory of Martin ever since the bombing because, you know, for me, Martin was <coughs> eight years old. He was standing here, and my son was eight years old, and he was in the bleachers. And my son saw everything. Oh, okay. And, you know, it, when you think about it, it could have been the opposite. Yep. I mean, the, yes. you know, it could yes. have been under the bleachers versus yep. across the street. And, yeah. mm -hmm. and so I've become really, really um, uh, friends uh, with the Richard family and um, Bill and Denise and Jane. And, and um, you know, I, it, it's just it's something that I feel I, I have to do. Yep. You know, yes. that I'm, I'm, it's my mission now to... I mean, imagine losing a, a child in that way. Yes. And so, um, so every race I've run since 2013, I've won the MR8 singlet, and I've tried to do what I can to raise some money for, for their foundation. Wow. That's well, great. Wow, you're amazing. That's great. Thank you. Absolutely. That's, uh, really. Uh, really great. So. Ah, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, yeah, really take take a <laughs> <laughs> I love it when you kick things off at the breakfast this morning and you, you know, you ask the crowd, where's all those 250 I people know, there? I, I mean, how many people run right. marathons and a couple of hands went up or how many, I mean, but you know, we all are just sitting there going, oh my God, yeah. you know, we really. Uh, but everyone does something. That's the whole thing. And I'm not okay. preaching running. Yeah. I'm, I'm preaching passion. Yeah. yeah. To yeah. follow yeah. your heart. Exactly. You know, 
you know, a lot of times, I bet you there's so many people out there who go to school for a certain discipline, get an education, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, five years later, they're doing something else. That's right. Because something Your clicked passion. it. Their yep. passion. Yep. Right. And that's right. the whole thing is that when people say to me, what do I do for work? I say, I don't. Mm -hmm. I say, you don't work? I said, yeah. no, because I love what I do so much that right. I don't necessarily consider it work. Yeah. I would be doing it whether I was making money at it or not. Right. You know, well, so. you know, that's the ideal job, that's right? That's the ideal. Is that's to it. Do what you, what is it yeah. saying? Lo love do what, what you, you love. do. Do yeah. what you love and you'll never work. Yeah. And they, yeah. Right? But it's yeah. so true. Yeah. So for Boston, it runs through, what, eight communities? Yeah. I'm assuming we're your favorite. Oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> At least on this show. Where it all starts. Where it all starts. It all starts here. I mean, are there different towns as you go along that you see different challenges, things like that? I mean, I got to watch one year at Wellesley when I was in college. Um, I went to school right near there. Yeah. And um, to be part of that scream tunnel was amazing. Yeah. yeah. So what are different high points of different towns? Well, I think one of, one of the greatest assets of the Boston Marathon is, in fact, the course itself, the topography, mm -hmm. and how it's all laid out point to point and undulation and, you know, the hills coming, downhills at the beginning and the uphills middle yep. and, and all that. So it just, it creates a level of, of challenge that is second to none. And so people have to acclimate themselves to that particular challenge. But the thing that we hear more than anything else when people run this race and then go home and we get the cards and the letters and the emails is about the fans, about the spectators right. along the course. What's, mm -hmm. What we're very fortunate to have is the most experienced spectators and fans yeah. in, of any marathon in the world. Why? Because we're running through residential communities. Yeah. Right. People are not driving there right. necessarily and setting up camp. They're walking out their front right. door. That's right. They're right. having parties on <laughs> their <laughs> front <laughs> lawn. Oh, yeah. You know, the kind of thing. Is is the, is Massachusetts party. I, I moved here 20 years ago. Yeah. And my uh, firm wanted to know why that Monday What's the big deal? there were no billable hours. <laughs> it's like, you don't get <laughs> it. it. You can't get to work if you want right, to. Right, and, right. Is, and oh, by the way, I moved to the town where it's a start. Yeah. And it is. It's one of those amazing Well, the funniest things. thing is when mm -hmm. I first started running at night, I'd be running through some of the towns, and there'd be a couple of people left hanging out, you yeah. know, after having a... You know, a few beverages. <laughs> right. and so you're going to buy TJ Spirits. They'd be yelling and screaming, hey, you know, pick it up, you slug. You know, you, why, why don't right. you train next year? Ooh. They didn't know. No, they right? Be right, and yeah. now after 30 years of doing this, people are, are getting it. And now a lot of people are actually staying out there. Yeah, waiting. 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 You. waiting. Wow. Yeah. And about two years ago, I was running the course, and two guys were out in a lawn chair having a few. And one, one guy starts yelling and screaming at me, and the other guy gives him a big elbow, and he says, hey. Leave him alone. Do you know who that is? That's the race director. <laughs> you know what I mean? Finally. <laughs> you know, it's like Steve Martin in the movie The Jerk. Yeah. When he sees the phone book and his yeah. name's I'm in there. Somebody. I'm somebody now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, amazing, awesome. I'm somebody now. Yeah, but the amazing thing is the race happens, and literally, when the race is over, and you go out there, it's over. You don't see it, it's, it's like, over. You know, the cleanup is boom. boom. The organization boom. is wow. awesome. Well, because we respect the fact that. You know, we're asking the communities to, yeah. you know, to, 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 you know, cooperate. And, you know, it's an, it can be an imposition. It can be an inconvenience where we're impacting, yeah. you know, people getting from point A to point B, all that. We, we respect that and understand yeah. that. So once we're done, we want to break down, clean up, and, and get things back to normal as quick as we possibly yeah. can. It's That's our commitment. Phenomenal <laughs> job. But, but, and, and speaking of community, let's give a little shout out to a couple of things that are happening. Coming so I know a week, a week from um, Saturday, there'll be both the Fur Ball and the HEF Gala. Yep. And actually leading into the marathon, and it all starts here, and we know you're, we're your favorite town. <laughs> is this year we're kicking off, and I know you've been part of these meetings, mm. is that um, at Western Nurseries, there'll right. be the Hawkington Marathon Spectacular, mm -hmm. because we are spectacular. Um, it's in partnership with Startline Brewery, Marty's Liquors. It's $20 a ticket. There are live bands starting at 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Party at Western um, Nursery. There's a kid zone set up, um, the, the cornhole things. And we'll talk and, more and, about that, and yeah. You, yeah. So that'll be coming up in time more. Uh, Hop Chamber, if you can get on their website, you can actually if you ha have your banner sponsor. Um, and the, the revenue is going to 26.2 Foundation. Uh, next Tuesday is Taste of Metro West at Sheraton mm -hmm. that's supporting local organizations out in this area. And next Sunday... It's taste of Ashland. Yeah, awesome. so there's a lot of it's food, luck going a lot on. of food, and I mean, honestly, everything that happens in Hoppington from now well, to Marathon yeah. is really focused at Marathon. Yeah. yeah, I'm exhausted already. <laughs> <laughs> you about it. Well, I mean, our well, day we started before seven. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, thank you so thank much you. for being Cheers. on our show. Cheers. Really, thank, thank you. you, thank you, absolutely. All right.
Thanks Thank for having you. me. I appreciate Great. it. Thank you. Cheers. 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 See you Thanks. in a couple Absolutely. of weeks, huh? Yeah. You bet. We'll be oh, well. cheering you on All right. to the wee Thank hours. You. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and, um, Thank you. Good morning, Dave, and to everybody there at the breakfast. Dave, I just want to send along a message and tell you congratulations on the Inspiration Award. I mean, come on, of course you get the Inspiration Award. You've done it all. You inspire us all. Have a great day. You definitely deserve this, and uh, let's go for a run soon. Together we can change the news. Find out how at safekids.org.